Okay, in this lecture, we are going to talk about isentropic processes. Now, an isentropic process is a process that is both adiabatic and reversible. So an isentropic process is a adiabatic and reversible process. And if we recall the um, relation between ds, entropy change, and the q, heat, added into the system, for a reversible process, we can immediately see that if a process is adiabatic and reversible, then that process must involve no entropy change. Because of this, because of d, ds equals um, delta q in divided by t. Okay, so if a process is reversible, then this relation uh, would be true. And if that process also involves no heat transfer, then delta Q will be zero. So ds is guaranteed to be zero. Now it's possible, remember, it's possible that you may have a irreversible process. And uh, after that irreversible process, the system's entropy goes does not change. The, the entropy of the systems uh, or the, the entropy change of the system is zero. Even if the system undergoes a irreversible process. Now just for, for example, just think of a system that undergoes a series of uh, re irreversible processes and completes a cycle and returns to its original condition, original state. Then in that series of processes, the system's entropy change is zero. But in that case, we don't call that process a isentropic process because that process is not a reversible process. Now, one basic practice is to be able to find the uh, properties of a system. If we know the system undergoes a reversible adiabatic process, or in other words, if the process, if the system undergoes a isentropic process. Now, certainly, if we are asked to find uh, uh, any property of the system, we need to be able to satisfy the state postulate. In other words, we need to know two independent properties of the system if we want to know any property of the system. Okay, here's a uh, example. Uh, a pro uh, example. R134A, this refrigerant, the R134A vapor enters a turbine at 250 PSA, uh, PSIA, that's absolute pressure, 250 uh, pounds per square inch and uh, at the temperature of uh, 175 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, we know the, uh, the, this refrigerant um, exits the turbine at 20 degrees Fahrenheit. We also know this process of the refrigerant in the turbine is a isentropic process. We are asked to determine the enthalpy change of the, of the refrigerant. Um, now this is a open system. We assume this is a, um, a steady flow process. So if we know the, uh, let me just draw the this process. Now we typically use a uh, trapezoid on the side to represent a turbine, and the small end is the entrance, is the inlet, and the, the large end is the uh, is the outlet. So at the inlet we have, a, okay, it's R134A and we know it's pressure 250 PSI absolute and 175 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and we know it's a uh, vapor, it's a uh, uh, it's vapor, okay. Um, at the outlet we know the, pr the temperature only and we are asked to find H2, the enthalpy at the uh, outlet, what is it? Okay, um, now if you just are given this problem, you see, okay, you think of, uh, the, what do you think of? When you think of the state postulate, if I'm asked to get any property of a system, I need to know two independent properties of the system so that I can 
determine the state of the system. Now here the system is the uh, is the control volume, and then um, is the is the specifically we're determining the determining the the, the working fluid, the R, the refrigerant uh, exiting uh, the the control volume. So in other words, where the, the our system is the refrigerant at the uh, or, or at, at the at the outlet of the control volume. Uh, we need to know two independent properties. We already know one, uh, which is the, the temperature. What else do we know? Now, the other thing, the other independent property that we could potentially find must be related to how the refrigerant got here, got to the uh, outlet. And since we know um, this refrigerant um, goes into the turbine and go through a isentropic process. That's the hint. That's the clue. That's uh, that's the the information that we will need to use in order to get another independent property um, at the outlet. Okay, another independent property. What is it? Okay, remember, keep in mind, this the process in the turbine is isentropic. So isentropic tells us the entropy of the working fluid of the refrigerant does not change. So the entropy um, of the working fluid of the refrigerant at the outlet S2 must be equal to the entropy of the, uh, of the refrigerant at the inlet S sub 1. So can we find S1, S sub 1? The answer is yes, because we already have two properties of the refrigerant at the inlet, and uh, they're potentially uh, independent. So as long as we can verify that these two properties are independent, then we can find uh, the entropy S sub 1. OK, let's first go to the saturated uh, refrigerant table and find out if this uh, state of the refrigerant at the inlet is a saturated liquid, saturated vapor, or superheated vapor. Okay, this is the uh, saturated refrigerant 134A pressure table. So remember our pressure uh, of the uh, refrigerant at the inlet is 250 psi absolute. So it's between these two values. 200, uh, I'm sorry, it's between um okay i it's between these two values it's between 240 and between uh, and 260 um the corresponding saturate saturation temperature uh should be between these two values and remember our our condition of the refrigerant is 250 PSIA and 175 degrees Fahrenheit. So th our temperature is higher than the saturation temperature. This tells us the refrigerant at the inlet of the turbine is a superheated vapor. Okay, then we can use the superheated uh, R134A table and find the uh, uh, the the entropy of uh, the refrigerant at the inlet, and based on our previous analysis, we know that uh, this analysis, we know this will be point four two three one one BTU per mass. Rankin. Um, so this is already no. This uh, the uh, entropy at the sec at the inlet is also no. Point four two three, etc. BTU um, over temperature and mass. So then we can use these two uh, properties to find the uh, any other property of the refrigerant at the outlet. And that's what we do. 
we use these two pieces of information. This T2, this is a given, and uh, this is known S2 equals to S, uh, S1 is from the, uh, the isentropic the isentropic process that knowledge and then we can transfer this value over here and we can determine the the phase of uh, the refrigerant, refrigerant again um, and once again we find out that it's a superheated vapor so we use the superheated refrigerant table uh, to find S2 in this case we'll need some uh, interpret uh, interpolation uh, to do the interpolation uh, we will need uh, to know the uh, uh, we okay well we we have a, a separate uh, lecture to 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 show um, how to do the interpolation we can interpolate the uh, against enthalpy for example in this case okay um, we also do we also need to find enthalpy change okay yes we need to find the enthalpy change uh, we need to find the enthalpy change okay that's why we have enthalpy here for the inlet and we also have enthalpy uh, here for the outlet and then we can calculate the enthalpy change done